Hello everyone, welcome to week 11 lecture videos. Our today's topic is international diversification. Thus far in this course, we spoke about investing very much from a domestic perspective. In this week, we start to consider some potential international factors that might be relevant and also discuss the merits of considering international diversification. We have four learning objectives today and as usual, I will be uploading separate videos on each of those learning objectives. So first of all, learning objective one. When it comes to think about investing internationally, the starting point is to consider the home bias problem in investing. In this learning objective, we are going to discuss home bias problem in investing. Home bias problem is the issue that investors tend to significantly overweight investment in their home market securities compared with their relative investment in foreign country securities, especially in a perfectly diversified portfolio. Investors theoretically should invest in all countries around the world in proportion to the size of the market capitalization of those particular markets. However, it's not what we observe in practice. Think about Australia, for example. In January 2017, the Australian market comprised about 1.9% of the market capitalization of all equity markets around the world. However, domestic portfolios of Australian investors tend to be comprised with 90% of Australian equities. So the question is, why is there such a low degree of international diversification comparing what portfolio theory suggests us to do? Well, there is a range of different reasons. Some people suggest information costs, others suggest trade cost, and uh, others again suggest issues with respect to geographical location. So what are some of those explanations? Well, first of all, it can be information cost because it can be difficult to access information regarding farms and stocks on international markets and we know that the less uh, information available, the high risk of investing. Therefore, some people might argue that it is actually riskier for investor to invest in foreign markets. That's why they prefer the home market for investment. Furthermore, since it's likely that the search and information costs are higher, so there are additional transaction costs. Again, when our domestic investors seek to invest in international markets, cost of trading in a foreign market will often be higher than cost of trading at home in a domestic market. There are also some other additional reasons why the home bias exists. One of those reasons is regulatory. Some markets actually prevent foreign investors from accessing these markets. China, for example, there are some restrictions on foreign investors on buying particular classes of shares in Chinese market. Whereas um, in the case of other markets, again, they might place some restrictions on the magnitude or the size of investment that can be made by foreign investors. So all these constraints do place limits and do incentivize investors to maybe look at their home market. However, we can still see that despite the fact uh, that these restrictions exist, investors still tend to overweight the proportion of their investment in their own home markets, and maybe there needs to be greater consideration given to diversification. Now, if we think about the issue of home bias around the world, um, it's not something that's just constrained in Australian markets. Considering across the world, there are significantly large proportions, generally around 90% of investors' portfolios include their own domestic stocks, whereas each of those markets comprise only a very small proportion of the world equity market. Look at this graph here. Uh, this graph actually shows the proportion uh, that each of these market holds in the global equity market and these tall bars indicate the proportion of the home securities in the, the portfolios of their investors. For example, if we take uh, Canada, Canada 
holds only 2.3% market capitalization globally. So theoretically, as the portfolio management suggests us that, that any portfolio held by a Canadian investor should include only 2.3% stocks from Canadian market and the rest should come from the rest of the world. However, what we practically see is the portfolios that is generally held by Canadian investors comprises 93% of their own stocks. I mean 93% of Canadian stocks. Only about uh, 6% uh, is comprised by international stocks. This uh, holds for all other markets. For example, if you take um, United States, uh, for example, about 50% of the world market capitalization is held by United States. That's why uh, the U.S. portfolio should comprise 50% of U.S. stocks and remaining 50% should be the stocks from the rest of the world. However, U.S. portfolios also include about 92% of U.S. stocks and only about 8% of their stocks are coming from the rest of the world. So uh, this graph basically indicates the severity of the home buyers problem across the global markets. So the key question now comes how investors can overcome that home bias and how can they invest internationally? Well, there is a range of ways to invest internationally to overcome the barriers. These include, for example, our chess depository receipts or CDIs. A chess depository receipt in Australian market is a stock that trade on a foreign market principally, but has a listing on the Australian Securities Exchange. Take News Corp. For example, News Corp is a, a media company, you know. It's principally listed on the stock exchange in the US. However, there is a CDI that trades on the Australian market, which is basically a security that tracks the returns of the News Corp stocks. So investing in CDIs in Australian exchange is equivalent to investing in News Corp on the US exchange and hence getting more global exposure in the portfolio. However, we should note that we don't actually even have to invest outside our home exchange in order to invest in companies uh, that give us international exposure. Because um, we can trade in Australian shares with international exposure. Take BHP for example. VHP has mining operations all around the world and therefore investing in VHP shares is not just like investing purely in Australian economy. It's like investing across a range of different economic exposures. Investors can also look at uh, investing internationally diversified mutual funds. There are a range of mutual funds whereby mutual fund managers construct a portfolio that invests in international markets. It means that uh, investors don't have to invest directly in international market rather than they can go through buying units in that uh, international or global mutual fund to get an exposure to international markets. And last of all, there are a whole lot of exchange traded funds that trade on the Australian Security and Exchange that track indices of foreign markets. So there are ETFs in the Australian markets and many of the large foreign markets are around the world. Take the US market, for example. There are several exchange traded funds on Australian stock exchange that are actually baskets of US securities. Hence, the return on those ETFs will track the US exchange. So home bias is considered as a problem that investors need to overcome and we have outlined some ways that investors can easily get global diversification into their portfolios. So this is the end of our discussion on this learning objective.